Alright, g'day guys, welcome back to another video. Um, I haven't done a screencast in a while, mainly because I was running a developer's preview of Mountain Lion, um, <laughs> and that kind of screwed me up because uh, as the developer's preview wasn't allowing me to use uh, ScreenFlow or screencasting programs at all, which was a bit strange, so that's been fixed, so I'm back to screencasting, which is good. Um, so today I wanted to go over this photograph as you see. Uh, this was shot a couple of nights ago. This is on one of the main streets in the city, just down in Sydney, in Australia, just down towards uh, about a 10 minute walk from uh, the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge. Uh, very simple photograph. I think the majority, I think the, the way that this photo really pops is what was done in post production. As I said, it's a very simple image. If I hit Command J, um, I'll go to. Sorry, I'll jump out of here. If I hit Command J, I'll go to my uh, show info overlay. And as you can see in the top left hand corner, the exit data reads 30 seconds at f8, ISO 100, uh, 10.5 millimeter fisheye is what I was using. Now, you may think this doesn't have any distortion to it. It doesn't look like a fisheye has been used. And that's mainly because I removed the, uh, the, the barrel distortion that the fisheye puts out because I thought this photograph had a better look with no distortion. That's the beautiful thing about Lightroom is that it does have a lot of Nikon and Canon lenses uh, profiled in that you can remove the distortion, which is actually very, very cool. Now let's go over to reset. As you'll see, this is a photograph after I've done the edits. I'll just quickly turn off that overlay. So this is a photograph as it's been edited. I wanna go back to the start and start from scratch so you can see exactly what I did to get this photograph kind of jumping out a little bit more. So let's hit reset. And bang, that was the original photograph. As you can see, uh, the buildings are a lot more distorted uh, on the left and the right. Obviously, that's the barrel from the fisheye. And it doesn't have anywhere near as much life to it. Now, what I'm going to do is go through some of the settings on the side and just do my personal touches to it. So the first thing, as I mentioned, I wanted to remove the distortion. So what I do is I jump all the way down to lens corrections and I click on enable profile corrections. Uh, Lightroom will generally straight up detect the lens that you, as, has been used. So as you can see here, I've used the fisheye Nikon 10.5mm f2.8, but there's also a bunch of different lenses. These are all the Nikon ones. That I've got set up and you can also download the same profiles for Canon, Tamron, Sigma, all that kind of stuff. So that's good but it doesn't get it perfect all the time. Uh, the, I mean it does do a good job in straightening it out but I think sometimes, I guess depending on what photograph, what the actual photograph is, you sometimes have to go back and do some distortion uh, correction yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in a little bit. So I'm moving down to about it looks right about there. So I've moved to 82. That was originally at 100. Um, and that's fixed the distortion just a touch. All right, next thing I'm going to do is hit, I hit Command 1, which is a shortcut. Takes me all the way back to my top uh, basic uh, adjustments. Uh, I'm going to hit R. R is the shortcut for cropping. I uh, hold down Option on, uh, a window, uh, on a Mac keyboard. And also, this is Alt on a... Uh, Windows keyboard and I'm going to drag down what that's doing is as you can see it's constraining uh, the crop now I'm going to put it so it's more or less looking kind of like a 16 to 9 widescreen image so I'm going to put it about there uh, double click and there you go the good thing about Lightroom is uh, Photoshop has now incorporated this new cropping feature where you uh, you don't actually throw it you don't delete the uh, the area that has been cropped out if you go to hit R again as you can see the image is still there so I can move it around however I want, keeping that aspect ratio. So I'm going to put it about there so you can see the edge of the pole in the right hand bottom corner and lift this up just a touch. Cool. Uh, I'm actually going to bring that up just a touch higher. Alright, excellent. Uh, now what I'm going to do next is Lightroom 4 is what I'm using at the moment. I think Lightroom 4, they did a major adjustment with clarity because clarity in Lightroom 4 looks so much better than what uh, Lightroom 3 or previous versions have done. Now, some people believe that clarity is sharpening it. It's not. Clarity doesn't, clarity doesn't sharpen the image at all. What it does is it, um, it extracts detail from the image, especially if you're, sh if, if you're shooting in RAW. Uh, it extracts a lot of the detail. So let's slide it all the way to the left. So basically, I'm going to remove a lot of the detail, and you'll see the difference. You see how everything kind of gets a little bit soft? 
Uh, that's not what I wanted this image at all. I want to extract as much detail as possible. So let's slide all the way up to 100. And there you go. You can see the difference straight away. So let's go... Uh, I, uh, if I option click, uh, I can reset the presence. Uh, the, sorry, the presence or the presets or whatever, however you pronounce that word. Uh, and that's going to move it back down to zero. So you can see the difference. That's zero and that's 100. So there is a major difference. It doesn't destroy any detail. It just extracts detail out and it brings, uh, it, it does contrast work for any of the black lines, especially on the road. So I personally think that, that feels a lot better. Now, what I also tend to do is uh, I muck around with my highlights and my shadows. I mean, obviously there's areas here that are blown out, but it kind of adds to the image. So for me personally, I'm just going to bring my highlights down just a touch to get a little, more, a little bit more in the buildings. I'm going to bring my whites down, so that's going to adjust mainly this area here, where is uh, this area here, which is the light trails from the headlights. Uh, I'm going to pull my black downs just a touch, and this is going to make it a little bit more contrasted. And this is what I also tend to do as well. I do usually bring the vibrance up a lot, so say uh, about probably about 50, 50 marks on this one, and then I pull the saturation back. That, I believe, gives me uh, a unique look. So let's go, uh, if I remove uh, the clarity, the vibrance, and the saturation. So again, option click will remove, uh, reset all of those. You can see the difference between it. So that's option, that's gone back to normal. It looks very flat, and then I'll undo that and go back to it. It really brings the buildings out, and it makes them stand out quite well. Uh, for this image, I'm not going to use tone curving or anything like that. Uh, even though it was shot at 100 ISO, uh, when I zoom in a little bit, there are small, and I'm not sure if you can see this um, because it's probably going to be viewed on YouTube. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there are small amounts of noise. Now, if I hit uh, Command-6, it's going to take me in a shortcut all the way down to uh, where my detail is. And I can pull up the luminance for the noise reduction. I only need to go about 30 or so on this one. But this would make a major difference if I was going to do a large print. Uh, probably go a little bit higher. Let's say I go to 50. Now, as I said, this is you can't really see it uh, probably on YouTube, but... If I was to print this to A1 or A0 or any of the B formats, you'll be able to see it straight away. Uh, noise reduction in Lightroom is excellent. It's some of the best noise reduction that I have used. Uh, so yeah, for, I mean, personally, this is what I would be doing straight away. Again, the good thing about the crop feature in Lightroom is uh, you can go back and you can adjust it however you want, or you can go up and use uh, a custom preset. So as soon as I hit enter, if I go back up to the top, uh, When I click on custom, you can see there's a couple of different presets here that I use. I generally like to use uh, 16 by 10, 16 by 9. Enter a custom is when you want to make your own your own design. Um, and yeah, that works really well. So again, this was just a really quick video. I haven't done a screencast in a while. Uh, I've got a bunch more coming up in the next couple of days. Uh, so stay tuned. I hope this helped. And I'll catch up with you guys soon. All right, ciao.